Hi, I am Siam Subair from CTAS School of Engineering Technology and Applied Sciences. This is an accent research presentation for Tilly 704. My research question is, how does the spaced learning over time enhance the problem solving ability of students in applied research courses? Accent research start with a problem. In my case, um, I considered a universal problem to any educators rather than a specific problem to my class. So the problem is forgetting. Um, we all know that um, the retention rate of any lessons is very low. So that's why we um, enhance the activities and the different type of reviews to increase the retention. So this experiment started with 1885 with uh, Hermann Ebenhus, a German psychologist who did um, a series of experiments on forgetting curves. He assigned certain nonsense levels and uh, looked at how effectively people keep those in memory. Surprisingly, within one hour, 50% um, of what we learn is forgotten and 24 hours it drops to 70 percent loss and uh, within a week 90 percent loss so that means a significant loss um, the statistics may not be applicable to all what we teach because we make some connections so that's why in this equation the memory retention is a function of strength of memory and the time the strength of memory is a complex um, stuff which includes um, individual um, strength, making connections, uh, the way we organize the data. So um, my um, aim is not to delve into that, coming directly to this, uh, my accent research question. So the problem is we forget things and the students do, and how do you reduce that? Now let's talk about how to overcome this forgetfulness. The review is the best way to um, retain the memory. And as you can see in this curve, the blue line represent the normal um, forgetting curve, which goes up very uh, rapidly uh, going down. But when you revise, the retention rate increases. The more reviews we have, the more retention, as you can see, um, when the reviews are spaced out, we increase our retention. Um, I call it like a booster vaccine theory. Um, we may know that with um, like a Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, we need to have more than one shot because um, when we get the first shot, um, uh, the Pfizer vaccines keep around 70% immunity, but with the second shot, it could boost up to 95%. So similarly, the same way the neurons work, when we revise, that boosts our memory and the retention. So this is what we call the spaced learning. So the spaced learning is not a new thing, which has been studied, reviewed over a century. And this has been proved to be true for a long time, different time period. And um, across different lifespan, the infants, adults, and elderly. And even it has been researched in the non-human um, and even invertebrates. So when the space learning um, is um, practiced, that increase the retention. The space learning is a widely documented concept and researched multiple times. Then the question is, what's the importance of my research? When I analyze the literature, the majority of the research were restricted to memory-based experiments. Only a few extend the concept to simple generalization and a little bit more on the complex generalization. In one of the experiments on the complex generalization, the school students were given some quizzes on the food web and how they relate the concept of food web and food pyramid to different biomes were researched. In my cases, a more problem-based approach is needed in the microbiology research. As you can see in the picture, uh, a, a key that we use may have multiple microbes. So there are so much of problems and how do we solve the problems? So these are part of the uh, concept we experiment during the 
the research pro projects. So I will be using this space learning um, and to see how that help to enhance the problem solving skills in my research course. My accent research was restricted to microbiology project to winter 2021. Uh, this is the first independent research project in microbiology. Um, it included um, 66 students from three sections and mostly international and female students. Um, the experiment typically would have two trials. In the first trial, they would do a set of experiments in the lab. And the second trial, they improve uh, with a problem-based approach with more scientific robustness in trial two. But uh, we have a change to the existing um, approach because of the lab closure, um, the, the course was made fully online. The students had to switch to um, the home-based experiments. I will describe this in detail in the next uh, part. It was done with a baseline data collection from week seven two surveys, the pre and post, and the intervention is by the consultation session. We usually have a regular consultation session, which is in week two. That's the time the students get into the group, they work in pairs and um, brainstorm the topics and get the approval for the topic. That's a mandatory session, which is not part of the research, which is a regular teaching practice. So this research include an optional um, session, which is the participator is uh, voluntary. Um, in this um, consultation session, we analyzed or discussed the trial one results and experimentation in the light of scientific concept. So the generally the scientific concepts are all delivered in the first three to four weeks. Now it is repeated um, it is not exactly the same repetition, but repeat, repeated in a more applied way um, in context with their own research. So that was a personal consultation sessions um, around uh, 15 to 20 minutes long. And the students um, come with um, online Zoom meeting and uh, we um, discuss together um, and they, uh, they come up with their own ideas and we extend their ideas. So that was the intervention and the data collection um, um, is um, related to the assignments and the uh, field notes. Before moving on, I just want to show you how the microbiology project two looks like. Um, as you can see in the picture, it is uh, full of biohazard and uh, you can also see some live microbes um, uh, which, are, which you can see the moving around. So, but um, this is not the case for this semester because of the lab closure. So this experiment is fully supervised because of the risk and health hazard. But the home-based experiments was um, independent. The students did all along. This is the first time we are exploring the options of a home-based experiment. The safety is paramount. And uh, we selected only the project which um, satisfies the safety. As you can see, some of the fermented, uh, fermentation experiments with balloons, the compost experiments, plants with uh, microbial uh, solutions, um, and some of the electrodes and uh, the microbial fuel cells. So these are unsupervised. They have a limited resources. They pick up from the lab and uh, do the rest of the experiments at home. It is um, it's completely they are doing in their own. So there are no regular feedbacks going on to them. So this is a big challenge um, and uh, it is somewhat less scientific. So the only way um, we communicate uh, or assess what's going on is by two assessment. The one is uh, the GLP practice or the record keeping. They record everything on a Google sheet and, uh, and to communicate with us. The second is video log. The video logs, they record everything they do and send it or submit it um, in the Dropbox. My data collection is straightforward. Um, it includes artifacts, inquiry data, and observational field notes. For the artifacts, um, I considered two assessment, both summative assessment. 
the record keeping, which accounts for a total of um, 10%, um, which represent two assessment, uh, one each for trial one and uh, trial two. And similarly, the video log, which um, correspond to 20% of the grade, um, that's for the trial one and trial two. They need to do two um, uploads. Um, I consider those marks grades. The inquiry data, which uh, included two surveys, um, one um, at the end of trial one, which is the pre-survey and the post-survey at the end of trial two. The observational data is a little bit complex, which includes students' participation, uh, peer review, how they interact with the group and uh, how they contribute. So a little bit complex and um, I address that at the observational data separately. Let's talk about the results. The summative assessments I considered were very similar. The GLP 1 and 2, which represent um, good laboratory practice, where the students will record um, all the details in a scientific way. So they have to do two times for the trial 1 and trial 2. Um, in this case, you can see the, the orange one represent the second part, that's after the consultation session and the blue represent the pre, which is the trial one. There is a big difference in the grade distribution. In the higher grades, uh, we can see the orange, which is the trial two dominates. That means there is an increase in um, trial two. And similarly, in video log one and video log two, which corresponded to two trials, um, the higher grades are dominated by video log two, which is uh, the post assessment. So after the intervention, the grades have increased. So which is quite um, remarkable. As you can see in this graph, the results for both GLP and video log have increased uh, from trial one to trial two. But um, is it a random or it is more scientific? Then we need to move to the statistics. The statistic um, t-test was performed. Um, this is a paired t-test. The reason being um, the same student can be considered uh, before and after. Um, although the names were not included, the total, um, the average was included. So for the, the GLP, um, the paired t-test was highly significant um, and the video log was very highly significant. You can also see um, there is a big change in the error bar. So the, the, the range of um, the error was very high in the pre-test, which is corresponding the trial one. The reason could be the student preparedness um, for the assessment, the clarity with the concept were less. So some of them even got zeros um, and uh, underperformed. And the second one, the trial two, there is a uh, less error. So, which also indicates the student's understanding is getting better. One of the problems in my accent research was there's no control group. Um, the consultation was offered to the whole um, 66 students, um, although 27% um, participated. The reason was um, we don't want to single out um, or deprive the opportunity of consultation to any group. So in that case, um, we don't know exactly the effect of higher results is due to the consultation session or not. So one way to double check this with the triangulation with the validity of multiple um, source of data. So this source come from the student survey. Um, as you can see um, in the blue graph, the excellent um, was not ticked by any student. That means when they did the trial one, they evaluated their rate of problem solving as low. But after trial two, um, there is a um, higher in the excellent. You can also see in this, um, there is an increase um, rate after the consultation session, um, the excellent part increased in the previous, um, before or pre-trial, um, there was a less um, problem solving ability. So overall, there was a 20 per, 22% increase in their problem solving ability 
based on how students perceived. Now let's move on to how students evaluated the consultation session. Almost all students um, rated which is effective or highly effective, which is great. They all valued um, the consultation session. And the descriptive analysis include multiple comments. Um, I have included a few. The consultation um, sessions were the reasons we were able to do the project. Um, and there is also a comment that um, the 20 minutes is not enough. It needs to be incre increased, which is a valid comment. But because of the timing for many groups um, in the middle of the, the busiest part, uh, busiest semester, uh, the time was limited, but uh, definitely that's a comment we have to consider for the future consultation. Now let's move on to the learning preferences. 70% um, of the students um, wanted to deliver all the concept in the first three weeks, uh, which is consistent with uh, many other researchers. Although the students like to have everything delivered at uh, once, the results are different. That was many researchers and the scholars um, sort of surprised. There's a discrepancies between the student preferences and the effect of space learning. Um, when it comes to revision, 33% um, preferred at least one revision and 44% preferred more than two revisions. So altogether, 77% preferred at least one revision. So which is great, uh, which sort of reinforced the concept of uh, space learning. When it comes to the consultation session, I wanted to see in what way the consultation session is helping. Um, so one of the important outcome, which I did not expect was um, by pointing the errors. So that is the majority of the students, because when we discuss in the consultation session, I could easily identify the errors in their concept and the way of thinking and put them in the right track, which I did not consider, but with the student survey that was become evident. So that's a good message for me um, and to the scientific community. The linking the concept, um, the basic concept we discussed in the first three weeks, so 28% preferred, that's a, the, the, the best help from this consultation. And some preferred, 28% preferred the consultation session extended a um, little bit beyond um, the concept and linking to further ideas. So overall, um, this uh, survey provided a valuable in-depth information. Now let's discuss about the observational data. So this is the most complex of all because uh, the observation comes from multiple sources uh, during the online Zoom meeting, um, during the email questions, the time they um, um, view the e-centennial messages and uh, discussion forum, um, the time they spend with the group work um, and the quality of the group work um, and the draft they submit um, and the group dynamics. There are multiple array of uh, student contribution which determine the problem solving. And again, the problem solving is a complex um, uh, criteria to uh, analyze. So I use some of the definitions which were used um, the organizing, synthesizing, generalizing, relating, identifying the problems uh, which were taken from the multiple sources and integrated into the field notes. As I discussed before, the field data or the class observation is one of the hardest to quantify. Um, as a checklist, we can easily say how many students um, attended or how many students uh, did the peer review or how effective the group work is. But um, obviously, the chat is different from the peer review. Anyone can do a simple chat. And how does it quantify or, or relate to the problem solving? So there are differences um, in the different ways they um, communicate, the ways they approach the problem solving. So I had an idea of using one of my tools developed for the decision matrix, which I used using a scoring system. For example, the chat is something's uh, lowest level of um, problem solving or communication. The online, um, looking at the resources, getting into the group work and interacting with the group work, the peer review, assessing the each partner and the draft, they send some work uh, which is documented in a draft folder. Mm -hmm. And using all these one, I sort of managed to um, do a scoring system 
the which scoring system include a weight for each of those categories and eventually um, I found it the trial 2 was um, higher than the trial 1 which is an indication that um, the interactions and the problem solving has increased based on the class observation. There could be multiple interpretation with um, the scoring system but at least it is something better than a checklist. As a reflective teacher I am looking back uh, based on the action research, uh, the findings were quite consistent with the hypothesis. The space learning enhanced the problem solving ability of the students uh, in the research based courses, which was not clearly documented previously, although the problem solving has been documented in certain parts such as mathematics. The in individual consultation session was an asset and uh, uh, that highly recommend including the consultation session um, at least um, once repeated during the course which would enhance the problem solving. So, so this is the take home message. The space learning is one of the easiest to practice and more effective in retaining the memory. It is not only simply the memory which can um, extend to the higher bloom uh, cognitive skills um, such as problem solving which was effective in uh, microbiology research-based courses. Thank you. These are the resources used for the Accent Research. The photos were from the research group or the previous publications by our research group. Thank you.